Hi everyone, it's Don from Crux Terminatus Minis. Um, I'm going to come right out and say it. That, um, this this um, thing is a is an unusual project for me. Um, there's a story as to why I've got such a lot of bits, and that is because I uh, was given one as payment for a, a job uh, for a commission before, and when it arrived, it was um, it was missing some bits. So the company very kindly sent me um, some bits to make up for that, um, but there was a bit of a language problem, and they ended up sending me. Um, some bits that I didn't really require and not the bits that I did require. So after a bit of to and fro um, they eventually sent me quite a lot of bits uh, and I'm very grateful for that. But um, as you can see, there were still some sort of rough edges and some rough casting, nothing, uh, nothing untoward, nothing unfixable, but certainly I believe that they might have actually improved their casting process since I got this model. Anyway, it's the Thunder Crow, so you can either have this as a two-man land speeder variant or a one-man Storm Talon uh, proxy. So I've gone for the uh, one ma sorry one-man Storm Talon proxy, and you can see it's an awesome-looking little uh, flyer. Uh, I think it looks more realistic, if that's a word that we can use about toy soldiers, than um, the Storm Talon by a country mile. And I just think it looks uh, rock solid. So there you'll see um, uh, the types of weapons that it can have. Uh, there's plasma cannons, flamers, assault cannons, um, multi-melters, las cannons. Uh, so that's me just showing you the, the bits that I've decided not to use. So this is my polarity checker. Uh, because all the weapons can be uh, magnetised and if you don't know how to make a polarity checker there's a video on Crux Terminatus Minis uh, and uh, props go to uh, Bidge who uh, is the first person that I saw with one of these things so if you don't know what a polarity checker is or what it does um, you can check out my video but it's thanks to him so um, uh, that's me just basically placing the the magnets in, uh, they're three by one mil magnets, and the super glue that I got uh, wasn't the best, so I was uh, kind of faffing about for a while. So this is me basically just doing all the uh, the prep work. Um, it's nothing really exciting to look at, but there was a, a quite a lot of it, um, mainly for the weapons, um, the the body of the 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 craft um, is only like six pieces of the, for the whole thing, so it's mainly just spending some time doing this. And if I can give you a cautionary tale, there are specific assault cannons for the wing tips, which I didn't realise until after I built it, but that's my fault. You can see that some of the holes here uh, weren't properly drilled out uh, for the magnets. Uh, in fact, one of the guns, uh, I think it was the multi melter, actually had the holes for the pivot and the hole for the magnet round the wrong way. So I had to physically drill them in myself. As I say, I'm sure Puppets War have uh, resolved uh, whatever problem that was with their manufacturing. Um, as I say, I've got no particular qualms with them as a company. I, th I found them uh, very helpful and eager to, to help. But you'll see here, this is, um, this is the this is me explaining that the actual pivot hole and the magnet hole is round the wrong way uh, for the last cannons it was, not the multi -melter. so you'll see that this is me trying to show you that uh, it's round the wrong way so what I did was I took one that didn't have a magnet hole and I drilled my own one so I was quite nervous at this point in time you know I didn't want to drill right through it or whatever or drill it too deep so a bit of a uh, slow drilling uh, until I got it uh, sorted out and in the end uh, it worked out fine, um, so uh, magnets in, uh, heavy bolters as well, I forgot to mention heavy bolters, uh, they're pretty awesome. So uh, certainly you can load this, this baby out to be anti-infantry, anti-armour, um, anti-high value targets, uh, it comes with uh, uh, anti-vehicle or anti-infantry rockets as well under the wingtips, so don't forget about them. So this is me basically just making sure everything fits together before I start gluing everything. So one uh, heavy flamer or inferno cannon and one uh, plasma cannon just to show you that the magnets uh, actually work. Just in case you thought that magnets didn't work for any reason. Um, and then I just basically put all the different weapons on just to see how they're going to look. And give them a shake just to make sure they're not going to fall off. And the magnets are, are solid so... No, no worries on that score.
it's the first time I've really tried magnetising a model, so I was quite pleased with the, the way it turns out. So, just some cocktail sticks and some blue tack to uh, stick it on uh, in order to get um, primed. I used Halford's uh, Car Grey Car Primer because I've found that with Forge World kits yeah, and other resin kits, it seems to be the best for it. Um, so, after I got some open heart surgery on my uh, Evolution airbrush from um, Bidge and Mithril, I um, I decided to to use uh, use it this time just to to see what it was like. So I went for um, the dark grey first of all. I had intentions of of painting this at this moment in time. It was still going to be a sort of custom homebrew chapter, but I had some problems with the uh, the grey. It just didn't want to sit well for me. And as you can see here, I'm leaving all the sort of dark recess panel lines. There's lots of my hand there, because you want to see what that was like. And um, it just it just didn't look right. It looked just not right at all. So I, I had a, a moment of madness um, and decided, well, what am I going to do with it? What you know, Am I going to make it white scars? Am I going to make it some other chapter? And a good friend of mine, uh, Eric uh, Spike uh, from the 40k for Grown Ups uh, Facebook group, he's always painting yellow and he makes such a good job of his orcs. And I thought, you know what, I would like to try yellow because I've never painted yellow in my life before. So I'm going to try and make this an Imperial Fists uh, flyer. Now, obviously, no one's going to let me play this in a normal game, which is a shame, uh, but I understand why not. So, whilst chatting to uh, Roddy, who's the other half of uh, Crux Terminatus Minis on YouTube, uh, we decided, or we were basically just trading stories about Imperial Fists, and I came up with um, the story of the uh, the Loyal Hornet, uh, sorry, the Loyal Wasp, um, which was a, a, an attack flyer, a dedicated close assault flyer that was under development when... Um, the facility on Terra was overrun by the Horus Heresy, uh, and this was the prototype number one um, that gave an amazing account of itself uh, before disappearing over the horizon on smoke after taking out um, a hefty number of um, renegade baddies. So the yellow went on just as you would expect, and you see I've done the pilot in the background there. I used the metallic um, a metal from Vallejo Model Air. Loving their colours. Uh, so this is the metallic gun metal. Um, it's darker than I wanted it to be, but I also went for a sort of steampunk type uh, copper uh, and brass uh, effect on some of the details on the on the weapons. So you'll see that later on. In retrospect, I would have done it a bit differently. I would have painted the the gas can that goes on the back of the flamer red, maybe, uh, and the assault cannons. I would have uh, noticed that there's one specifically for the uh, the wingtip. So if you're ever interested in how I do plasma coils, it's pretty standard stuff. Um, just uh, an, an airbrush of uh, blue, and I believe that's regal blue. And I did the, the last cannons as well. Um, again, not really bothered painting that part of last cannons again before, but there we go. And some hawk turquoise, um, just to give it a sort of glow and then I did the same with the, the last cannons actually the last cannons look really really strong uh, you probably can't see that very well and then just a, a, a tiny little brush of white um, with the airbrush there just to to make them look really sort of like they're throbbing with power um, again I'm not the master of this by any stretch of the imagination there's probably a million videos on YouTube that will show you how to do it uh, after I cleaned my airbrush, I realised that you know it might be an idea to have the end of the plasma cannons glowing like they've just fired a shot. So I went back and got it all dirty again by painting regal blue turquoise and then uh, a little dot of um, white in the middle. Does it work? Yeah, why not? I think it does. Um, so there you go. So there's the weapons. And then after I cleaned the airbrush for the third time, I then remembered that I'd forgotten to paint the glow on the engine. So um, I was going to try and do a red glow or an orange glow. And then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to carry on with the same colours because I know they work. So this is, uh, again, the, the same colours. You'll notice in the background that my um, 
my painting tray is better at doing wet blending than I am, um, <laughs> which wouldn't be hard actually to be fair. Whilst we're looking at this, the uh, the gunner, who's the guy who sits in the front seat, uh, you'll you'll see I haven't painted him because he's completely covered in the Storm Talon proxy version. In the Land Speeder version, he's out in the open, so I'd have painted him. Um, and I'm sure you're meant to be able to switch the wings on and off um, to make it from both variants, but to be honest, I uh, I wasn't really going to do that, so I've uh, I resin them on later on. So. Details for the engines and some of the weapons, I use um, Vallejo liquid metals uh, and that's the copper colour. really like it. goes on really, really well, covered brilliantly. And that's me just doing a sort of test fit to see if the, um, if the weapons look alright. So after brushing the pilot Imperial Fist yellow for his armour, I thought, well, a test pilot's going to be green. Um, just like the, the RAF, so I did did all that, and then I painted the cockpit. Now, unfortunately, it's uh, about midnight at this point in time, so there's no natural light coming in. So my um, my video cameras made the the whole experience go a bit orange. But I did a radar, I did a sort of head up display unit, and I did some some lenses. That one on the right was a bit difficult actually, but there you go. So lots of uh, lots of detail in the cockpit because there's lots of detail put in the cockpit. Uh, I painted a green lens, a red lens and a purple lens. I'd never painted one before and then a spotlight in the bottom left. This is me using the trusted Butterkiss Toffee um, mix up your resin. I decided long ago that I would just use things like that, like plastic bags and stuff and just bin them afterwards rather than trying to clean the, the plastic slate that you get. So you'll see that gets used a lot and plus you get to have Barkas to toffee popcorn, which is always a winner. So I've stopped using uh, super glue to put uh, resin models together because it just doesn't work. Um, so that's me putting the two-part epoxy, uh, resin epoxy, uh, to hold it together. And uh, now we're on to the fun stuff. Again, I've never actually put transfers uh, on models before. Uh, I think I'm right in saying that. If I have, I've only done it once. I've certainly never done it on a 40k model before. So I put some gloss varnish down on where I was going to stick the models. I've, I've learned that much from YouTube. Uh, and then I realised that the Imperial Fists logo would have to be straddled across the panel line. And I thought, well, in real life, you know, they would either gap it out or they would paint down into the gap. The transfer won't go down there. So I decided to cut it in half and then line up the other half. And I just think it you know, again, realism in a, in a toy soldier's aircraft is a, is a funny concept, but um, I just thought it made it look a bit more realistic. I put a black Imperial Eagle on the front and some ejector seat um, warning triangles there. So then I covered it with uh, Vallejo uh, gloss varnish, and to be honest, I don't know what I do wrong with this. Um, it just doesn't seem to work for me. Pin washing and me, not the best bedfellows. So I made a wash with uh, three parts brown to one part red to give it a sort of a yellowish tinge to it or an orange tinge to it. And as you can see, I just quickly, I'm not showing you how to pin wash because I'm, I'm sure you all know how to do that. So I, I did it all and wiped up the excess with uh, a cotton bud just with water. And then I mixed up a sort of orangey brown colour and um, went to town with a sponge. The Some people might say I went overboard here, um, and I will accept that criticism, um, but it's it this, the background fluff is this thing was a prototype, and it went out, and it gave a royal account of itself. Um, so, I mean, it got absolutely battered and banged and smacked about the place. So I'd used um, a, a chain mail as well, uh, the light doesn't really pick it up, but in all the areas uh, that get get wasted, I do that as well. And then I used uh, aircraft streaking grime to um, to make it look a bit like that. And then some burnt umber um, to just give it a, a sort of battle-worn, rough and ready look. And again, this is now night time and it looks like it's gone orange. Now that looks a bit better, I don't know what happened there. And then I just put some sort of suit marks in the back for where the sort of jet wash uh, for the engine would be 
Uh, and I have to be honest, by this point in time, I'm actually super excited about it because I think it looks awesome. Uh, and it's very rare. If anyone knows me, you'll know I don't big up myself very often at all. Uh, but I really think this one looks the bomb. You'll notice there I'm putting the guns on backwards. That was a bit of a mistake, especially when you put them on with resin. I was sitting there going, oh, bugger. And then, of course, I realised and then put them uh, on the right way and then went down and managed to have something to eat before I uh, fell out. So this is really the sort of job done. It's the different weapons uh, options. Uh, I'm going to go back and redo the multi melters with a sort of green glow in the power pack, but ultimately, love the model, and for once, I'm going to come right out and say it. I love the paint job. Um, I, I will accept that maybe there's a bit too much weathering on it, but if you could please, please, please leave a comment, because it makes all the difference in the world when people like your stuff, or you know, like or dislike it, but uh, leave a comment. The last video I did, someone, a couple of people didn't like it, but didn't say why they didn't like it. So if you could, uh, if you could share that, that would be brilliant. So if anyone wants an Imperial Fist Storm Talon, let me know, uh, because I don't play Imperial Fists. Um, uh, let me know. Uh, <laughs> but most importantly, if you could please um, comment, like, and subscribe to our video. Um, the, we put a lot of effort into making them for you. Um, and if you've tried to make a, a figure or paint something whilst a video camera is stuck in your face, it's not the easiest in the world and um, we'd really appreciate your feedback. So that's just a, a 360, as I say, really, really love it. Wish that people would let you play other companies' uh, models and games because as far as I'm concerned, that absolutely destroys the Storm Talon in terms of how awesome it looks, especially with the missile pods under the, the wing and... The, the assault cannons on the on the wing tips there. Um, so can't rate it highly enough. And puppetswar.edu were the company I got it from. Um, and as I say, despite the the small problem at the start with sending me the wrong parts a couple of times, um, they really did try their best to sort it out. So I appreciate that, and I hope they've done their model justice. So I've got one last picture in the better light uh, of it. Um, so just to, to show you that it is still yellow underneath um, so if you would like to uh, leave a comment um, I would be much appreciated and please please share it with your friends so thanks very much